Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds. In today's video topic, we're going to be going over this abomination build. So, Jim G and I have been working on this on the side a little bit. We realized that the node, the Soul Reeve node that gives Abomination the gigantic amount of AoE, it can actually get access very quickly by running the node Putrid Demise on the Necromancer tree, as it allows you to summon a Wraith at a 12% chance on minion death. Now, why that's important is because if we cast our bone, uh, our bone curse, which will summon all the little bone, you know, bone minions, right? And as they die and get consumed by the abomination, a wraith will spawn and then count as a wraith for the soul reef. So we do not have to spec wraith at all. It just counts as an extra minion, which is insane for this build because it allows us to run the soul reef node without having to spec in wraiths, which was one of the biggest issues. Because as you can tell in the footage, we're using five skills and we could not afford to run wraith, right? And makes it a lot easier to run overall. Now, as you can tell in the footage, I have really cruddy gear. I have like about half as much minion damage as I could probably have. And as you can tell in the footage as well, there's a lot of modifiers, like a lot of like chonky modifiers as well. They have a lot of health, a lot of damage. So this is definitely being showcased in very high tier monoliths and stuff. Uh, one thing I really like about this build is with the minion AI update, the abomination definitely does its work. Like it actually goes and seeks out enemies it actually protects you if you get attacked it's actually one of the chillest minion experiences i've ever had now there is one issue sometimes a 12 percent chance sometimes you don't get a wraith but it's very easy to tell when you summon a bad abomination as he won't have the gigantic soul reef arm so if you just summon an abomination without the gigantic soul reef arm, you just resummon him again real quick. It's definitely one of the easiest ways of resummoning abomination, thanks to the bone curse setup, thanks uh, that is popularized by uh, Zekker um, when he made his abomination build, his first one. So this is just pretty much an upgrade to that build, as you can just run the swipe and <laughs> it feels amazing. I'm so surprised because like these kind of builds generally don't feel good, but like it felt really good for Monolith. Like you just kind of have the thing follow you and it just kills everything and has plenty of movement speed thanks to infernal shade and has plenty of damage thanks to dread shade and since we're stacking so much health the abomination spends a lot more time on the field without us having to respec it too many i mean you know resummon it too many times another thing as well is the synathia set so the synathia set was released in this patch it's a one-handed scepter I think a mace actually, and a shield. And pretty much the main things it gives you is it gives you 25% to all minion res, which is important because Dread Shade and Infernal Shade are both fire and poison damage. So it makes it so that they last longer on Abomination without having, you know, without him draining too hard. So more res on him, the better, which means like less poison damage it takes from Dread Shade. And then, of course, you get minion crit avoidance 100%, which means our Abomination never gets crit which means we can run as much crit modifiers as we want on the monolith and not really give a crap if we're, you know, crit avoid. And then it also gives us plus one to minion skills and plus one to curse skills as well, which allows us to grab even more damage with Abomination's tree because uh, this build will definitely want a plus two at Abomination as we are running a level 23 Abomination as there's a lot of nodes you want to grab as uh, the more nodes you can grab, the more damage you can get. So definitely an Omnis is on the table as well later on. But we are using the Fang, which is an amulet, a unique one that gives you 16, uh, I think 16 melee physical flat, which is an insane amount considering that the abomination starts at 20 i think he either starts at 20 or 40 i believe it's one of those all right uh with that being said let's get into the game shall we all right here we are in game with the build we have the assembled abomination here before we move on with the skills i am going to show you guys how to actually summon the dang thing because it is a process so i'm going to place down the bone curse we have a bunch of bone pillars which will count as minions for the abomination we'll hold down the w key to summon it as you can tell multiple wraiths are being spawned which will count for the soul reef and you see this little uh ray like scythe thing on his arm that counts for the rate like the the soul reef thing so he has the aoe there right and then we place infernal shade on him as that will give him a bunch of movement speed and attack speed. And then we place Red Shade on him so he always crits and has a mega ton of damage. And pretty much now, oh, I had uh, 
display damage numbers off real quick. And as you can tell, he does plenty of damage. Uh, we could definitely get a lot more damage than I have right now. I only have like 400%. We can get way more than that if we really want to. And that's how you summon him. Let's get into the skills. We have Abomination here. We have two points travel into Domination to deal more damage. Uh, travel anyways. Four points and increased melee AoE for a lot more melee area. This like doubles your area. And we grab one node into Reap of the Dam. This is what allows us to get the Soul Reef. So it's very important. We used to not grab this because we used to not summon a Wraith to do it. We used to go for Stomp, but this actually turns out to be way better. Now, one thing about this is there is no cooldown on it, but it's a three attack combo. So if you watch him, one, two, three, one, two, three. So the more attack speed you get, the better this gets, which is why all these buffs are insanely strong for us. Now we take five points into a veracity, so channeling a symbol abomination consumes minions faster. That makes it so that when we're like in monoliths or in arena or whatever, and we need to resummon abomination, it doesn't take five years. Then one point into covetous consumption, so channeling a symbol abomination now consumes two minions at a time, which means when we create our symbol abomination, it happens very quickly. And we don't have to worry. Although, like you said there, like you saw there, sometimes we won't summon a wraith, so all we gotta do is just do this again real quick. And we did summon a Wraith that time. It's very easy to tell because of the arm, which is very nice. Then, of course, we take two points travel into Hulking Mass. Four, five, well, eventually, we'll want plus two to assemble Abomination. We get five points in Engorgement. Since we're consuming so many minions, this is a lot of more damage. Like, we're at least summoning, like, ten minions at once if in no race spawn or whatever. Two points into Stitch Flesh for less health, de health decay. Then one point into Kedvaris Carapace. So you could technically run without these nodes, but your assembled abomination would die way quicker and you have to resummon them more, but you definitely need to be doing a lot more damage as you do get a 20% less damage modifier. But health decay at half speed is definitely worth it. As you can tell, we can leave him up for a while and he does completely fine. Look at him, he's having fun. And uh, for other nodes, you could probably grab. So if you were to get an Omnis and a plus one, to gen a plus one you could grab one point into Spoils of War travel and then one, uh, two points into Flesh and Blood for even more damage, probably. Or you can grab Increased Area as well and then grab an extra point in damage. There's a lot of things you could do with this build, but that's definitely uh, some of them, right? Now, the next node that matters. So the only thing, well, there's a few things that matter here. So for Bone Curse, we take four points travel into Conflation, uh, one point into Bone Prison so that we summon all these minions. I'm going to grab one point into Shattered Prison so that the Bone Prison has gaps, but it means that, you know, the cooldown isn't as long. Then one point into Ossify so that it has significantly more health, which will affect the some of Abomination's health, because if you did not know, all of the health of all the minions, right, will get sucked up into that, which is very, very strong, right? Then one point travel in the Crippling Anguish. Four points into Cultus Fever, so that we have mana efficiency and cast speed, so it's quicker to do it, right? Then five points into Merciless. So the what we use this for is we get 50% more physical damage with our Assemble Abomination. So once we summon our Assemble Abomination, right, and we're pretty much ready to go on that, and we set it up, and we're attacking single target, we generally don't have anything to do other than keep up our Dread Shade, so we might as well plop down Bone Curse and give it more damage. And that's pretty much like because a lot of a lot of the damage he does is physical damage, which is confirmed because like of all the physical we grab. So it definitely gives him a lot of damage. Now we're going to talk about Dread Shade here. We take three points travel into Lingering Doom, one point into Pernicious Pack to turn it into uh, Poison Decay instead of Health Decay, which will keep us up a lot longer thanks to all of our resistance. One point into Egoism, so we always crit, which is very important. Uh, three points into Doom Wrath for 60% more damage. One point into All for One for 100% more damage, so we don't have any aura buffs, so it doesn't matter because we don't need it. One point into Blind Flurry. Since we auto crit, this increased attack speed is worth it, and it blinds my minion, but that doesn't matter because, like I said, uh, we have 100% chance to crit, so we always crit no matter what. Two points travel into Spectral Presence. Three points into Dying Coven for even more attack speed because, like I said, the more we attack, the more AoEs we get because, as you can tell, one, two, three... So it means that we want as much attack speed as humanly possible. Four points into Grim Fate for the 60% more damage. And then one point into Flush Harvest. So you might want to get plus two 
to dread shade so that we get more points in the dread uh, flesh harvest which means whenever our abomination takes a lot of damage he actually ends up doing way more damage and increased attack speed which will also give us an increased buff effect right which will make him do more damage which is probably a good idea now infernal shade here uh what's important here is we take three points travel to influence one point to devour and flame so we target on the enemies one point to burn trail so that we get haste on our assemble abomination one point travel into subjugation one point into soul fire so we have unlimited duration on minions so you only need to put it on him once per time you summon him which is very very strong then three points into demonic possession so we get about 72 percent increased movement speed attack speed and cast speed which is insanely strong because like i said the more attack speed we get the faster he recycles through his attacks and also as well the faster movement speed he has the better your monolith clear will feel now for the rest of it we just grab cast speed and man efficiency and then these five points don't matter because it does nothing else so it's just put it put it wherever it doesn't hurt your build now for or of decay we're using the stereotypical defense setup with the increased healing and all that i'm sure you guys have seen this plenty of times before i'll leave a build planner in the description i don't really need to explain this one and then now for passives here it's very simple eight points of the forbidden knowledge for the necrotic resistance the intelligence gives a four percent increased damage per point which is useful five points into dark rituals for increased more minion attack speed seven points in stolen vitality because you want as much minion health as possible because uh the because if you did not know, the Assemble Abomination Decay is, uh, it is linear, so it's not like, it's not like exponential, it's linear, so the more HP we have, the longer he survives, which is cool. And then, uh, after that, we take 10 points travel into Apocrypha for mana regen, because sometimes we do run out of mana, and then so that we can grab Aura of Decay. You could probably take, like, 8 points into Survival of the Cruel instead, it's up to your discretion on that. Now, 8 points into Risen Army for increased attack speed, increased damage. 10 points into Cursed Blood for increased physical and necrotic, as we're going to be doing a lot of increased physical, a lot of necrotic and physical with this build, with, uh, with the minion. 1 point travel to Blood Armor. But 6 points into Mortal Tether. You could probably max this out by the time you get to level 100. 8 points into Unearth Arms. Just a lot of flat physical. Like I said, I think we started at like 20 or 40 flat. So this is an insane amount of flat. 3 points into Putrid Retribution. This is very important as that's how we summon the Wraiths to summon from Assemble Abomination as you can tell there. Which means that he gets the Soul Reef. It also gives you extra minions for uh, Engorgement. And he also gets increased damage per extra minion as well. So sometimes your Abomination will be hitting like a truck and sometimes won't be hitting as much. But that's just kind of how the build works. Then 5 points into Frantic Summons for more attack speed. 5 points into River of Bones for Leech. I don't believe we need this Leech. I believe it's not enough to make it worthwhile. So I might take these 5 points and put them somewhere else. 10 points into Moonlight Pyre for increased flat, uh, flat fire and necrotic. Which is insane because the more flat we get the better. And we could probably take 10 points into Rite of Undeath later on for the increased necrotic and elemental. Which affects this as well. 10 points in the Blade of the Forlorn for the minion critical strike multiplier. We are not running a death rattle. We're running, we'll be running double uh, turquoise ring. So the more crit multi you can get, the better. And that's pretty much it for the skill, uh, for the tree, pretty much. Uh, in the description, there will be a full setup. Now, for gearing, for idols, we want increased health on all four of these idols. We also want a uh, chance to, chance to, Chance to cast Mark for Death on Minion to Hit, meaning that, you know, we get 25 res on it and it'll make your Abomination do a lot more single target, but mainly you just want as much increased HP as possible. Then you obviously want Healing Effectiveness Idols for your Aura of Decay. Uh, I don't have that many Healing Effectiveness Idols and the footage, only 224. You can definitely get all the way up to 800% if you went really hard on it. Now for other gear, Helmet, you want increased Minion Health, that's the most important here. Uh, for the amulet, you need the fang, so you get the 14 melee physical for minions, and it makes it so our assembled abomination never gets stunned as well, which is a nice little caveat. Uh, then we're using the Synathia set. The main important thing about this is it gives us the 25% all rest to minions, the plus one to minion skills, and then we also get the 100% minion critical strike avoidance. You can use a ribbon of blood instead of this set, which a ribbon of blood makes it so your minions can't be crit. So you could just run 
a different weapon for even more damage. This is the defensive setup if you think your abomination is not surviving long enough. Or you can go for a one-handed scepter or one-handed weapon with melee minion physical. Uh, or like I said, you can go with a two-hander as well. You can go with even more. It's really dependent on what you feel like. I like the Sanathia set. I think it's an amazing set in my opinion. Caps helps you cap your res, but you can definitely go for way more damage than what I'm showing. For the chest, increase minion health. Uh, for the other one, we want vitality, obviously. You want more HP as well. This is a really shitty chest. I'm just trying to show off how good the build can be with really shitty gear so you guys can understand how strong this build can actually be later on. For the ring, I have like a really shitty ring, just minion damage. Minion damage, minion health on the ring's prefixes. Get some crit avoid, some endurance. Uh, same thing with the turquoise ring, minion damage or healing effectiveness mainly. Actually, you want minion damage, healing effectiveness. Minion damage, healing effectiveness, you want it both on turquoise rings. Like I said, in the description, there will be a build planner. On the belt, we're just using increased minion damage mainly and just HP and HP. We have a lot more endurance than I need right now. Increased minion damage, increased minion HP later on. Uh, block chance, because we are running a shield, you could run block chance, but I'd probably rather just run more HP. The boots, we have HP, uh, movement speed, and of course, we can always get minion HP here as well as a prefix or vitality, probably vitality, because uh, our abomination survives long enough. It's mainly us surviving that's the important part. And we use the rune bones relic because it gives us increased damage and movement speed and health, which is insanely strong. This is where you get your plus two to abomination, get the increased minion damage, and then uh, the rest would be res resistance. In the planner, like I said, there will be a finished build guide. Uh, we'll finish setup. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at. And bye.